Hello, friends. Hello to future friends, since no one's watching live yet. Um, but someone will pop in momentarily. Um, I'm Skix. It is the 23rd of March, 2020. It is Monday morning, um, and it's still part of the uh, um, post-apocalyptic uh, excitement that is early 2020. Uh, hopefully just early 2020. So, um, today, what have I been doing? Uh, I had a, a phone call with a member of SCORE, which is the Service Corps of Retired Executives, which is a volunteer organization uh, that helps people start small businesses. And he is my mentor in starting up St. Josephine's Home for the Unloved Arts. Um, and so he's been really instrumental in, in, in our being able to get going. Uh, we have our 5013C C3, I can never remember which it is, um, uh, cleared and we've got some, some more steps to go through and we've got some alliances to build and because we're a performing arts organization, a lot of things are on hold right now. Hi James, hi Bryce. Um, so uh, I did that, then um, a friend and I went to the Salt Lake City Cemetery where we could be socially isolated out in nature and and I took a bunch of pictures um, and uh, you know all well, the interesting parts of the cemetery uh, and that was great and we had some thunder and rain and it was all very atmospheric I was up for it um, because I I'm not performing I have no reason to dress up so that's why to dress up and, and then I had lunch and here I am and I want to show you two things um, I've got a household trick and a magic trick, and I'm going to show you how to do both of them. Let's start with the magic trick, okay? Now, you, you could make a case that this isn't a magic trick, but then again, nothing is a magic trick when you know how it works. Um, I'm not a fan of how this is uh, working. Okay, so... Here's a, a, a caveat on this. This magic trick resembles something that people do that they say, and I think rightly feel, is real and true and not a trick. Am I saying that everyone who does something that resembles what I'm about to do is faking it? I am not making that claim at this time. But I am pointing out that you can learn how to do this for your own self. And so if you see someone doing this and claiming that it's supernatural in order in origin, um, you may want to just check more more than than first appearances. Um, because as you know, if you watch magicians, we do things sometimes that look supernatural and they're not. And we don't, generally don't show you how the trick is done. So um, if, if, if you want, you could imagine that we really are supernatural. And there are uh, magicians who go down the bad road and they become charlatans and frauds. Um, and, and I'm not one of those people. And even though my, my main act is based on a seance, it's called the liar's seance um, with intention. Um, everything we do is a lie. And I mostly do very broad comedy uh, in the liar's seance. Um, I have more subtle and manipulative skills that so far I just haven't dared to use because I'm desperately afraid someone will believe me. Um, but I'm going to show you one of the tricks that I, I have learned that I have not used in the seance. But if uh, you uh, attend a real seance. If you attend a seance where people believe they're really contacting the dead, um, this is a technique you might see them use, and it's it's a pendulum, right? This is something I ordered off Amazon. It's a, it's a, a bit of fluorite, not fluorite, labradorite, a bit of labradorite, silver chain. This one's got a little knot in the chain. I can't do anything about it um, without breaking it. But People use uh, pendulums uh, for all sorts of things um, that uh, per pertaining to finding of information, generally, right? So 
people historically have used a pendulum as a means of dowsing, as finding water, as finding lost uh, objects. Um, people have used pendulums uh, to uh, speak with the dead. People have used pendulums to uh, discover whether uh, a pregnant woman has a boy or a girl in her tummy. Um, traditionally, that pendulum is the wedding ring on a chain, but it's, it's a pendulum. Um, so if you want to try this, um, really just a weight on something flexible, right? String, rope, um, better results from something that, that's fairly, um, where the, the, the chain is fairly light and flexy, um, and the, the weight, I don't know, you'll, you just have to experiment. You, you can, you can fake something up. This is, is a fairly standard uh, magical pendulum, as it were. It's not tricked. This is straight, exactly what it looks like. Bit of chain, bit of stone. Um, it's got a little ball there. I hold it like this because it looks more honest. Right? Now, this is a trick for those of you coming in late. I'm not showing you a real psychic, telepathic, uh, or um, psychokinetic thing. This is a trick. Right. So I hold it like this because it looks more honest, right? If I do this, um, it looks more like I'm, I'm going to fake it, right? Um, the, the, the amount of fakery is exactly the same, but it looks a bit more honest. Um, and I'm not perfect at this. Uh, this is one of those things where um, I know the technique well enough to demonstrate it, Others are better at it, um, but uh, if this is something that interests you, you can learn to be better than I am now about to demonstrate to you. Um, no camera tricks, no trickery at all. Uh, it, it, for the most part, it is what it appears to be, um, except don't accept psychic powers as an answer, and then uh, leaving that out of the equation, what does it appear to be? All right, so... Pendulum, straight up and down, pretty still. Now, uh, if if someone in the room is an asshole, spin counterclockwise. There you go. Now stop. If someone in the room is possessed by the evil dead, Go back and forth. Be still. All right, so the, the, the method is exactly what you think it is. I'm moving it. I'm moving it with my hand. Um, I'm not perfect. I mean, if you're watching very carefully, you can see minor movements, but you're not going to see anything that looks for sure like, like I'm manipulating it. Um, just sort of the general, um, I, just sort of, you know, I mean, like no one's hand is perfectly stable. I, I used to, because of one of the med medications uh, I had, I used to have a tremor, um, and that made it very hard to look convincing, even though the tremor didn't add any, 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 anything to it. Um, go... Uh, let's see. Uh, <laughs> um, but, so how do I move it without uh, appearing to move it, right? As I say, it's just my hand. Well, here's the thing. A pendulum, th this is physics. A pendulum, by its nature, takes a very small movement and magnifies it at the other end. Right? It's like a lever. Small movement up here, big movement down here, right? And if you know how to, how like a, um, if you're pumping on a, a swing to get it to go higher and higher, you give it energy during part of the swing, not the whole thing, right? So if I want it to swing back and forth, what I'm going to do is give it a little boost to the left when it's at the bottom of the swing, and then a little boost to the right when it's at the top of the swing, and it'll accelerate up to a certain point. Um, but that's really hard, isn't it? To do just microscopic amounts of movement on purpose with, with, with the intention of moving 
uh, this pendulum and keeping track of the periodicity of, of the swing and whether it's going round and round or big and big and back and forth or, or uh, front and back, left and right, forward and back, left and right, round and round, clockwise, counterclockwise. Um, that's hard, right? Well, here's the thing. You already know how to do this. You, I'm staring at myself instead of the camera. You already know how to do this. In your day-to-day -day life, constantly, you are using your muscles in microscopic ways. You are using your muscles in ways that are not visible or feelable, tangible, um, outside yourself. You are standing up. If you're standing up straight and not moving, your muscles are uh, shifting constantly to keep you upright. Um, if you're if you're stabilizing anything, your muscles are constantly working to stabilize, but in microscopic increments. So when someone's like very young, they 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 tend to make very big corrections, you know, or if they're drunk or something like that. But the more uh, practiced you are at something, the smaller the corrections are that you need to make. So knowing that this is a skill you've already got, and understanding the methodology. Here's, here's, here's kind of the trickery. You've got to trick yourself. And here's how people do it to themselves. They'll trick themselves. They will convince themselves they have this power when in fact they just have a lever and microscopic muscle movements. Now again, I'm not making a case one way or the other whether telekinesis is real. I'm saying that this is a thing that happens without telekinesis. So... If you want proof of telekinesis, this is not sufficient in and of itself. So what you do is exactly what you would do if you thought you were psychic. You stare at it and you think to yourself, let's go counterclockwise. And your unconscious movement of the muscles will cause it to go counterclockwise and stop. And clockwise. It takes a little practice. That's back and forth. Clock. There we go. Clockwise. And stop. And let's go, say, left and right. And stop. Now, the way to use this as, as a magic trick, because it's not a trick. It's not really a trick yet. It's a technique. Um, but the way to use that uh, as a magic trick would be to couple it with other kinds of magic. And it's really best used with scam magic, right? So I can use a bit of cold reading technique um, to, de to decide um, whether my, my uh, audience volunteer um, thinks that the answer to the question I'm asking is yes or no. And then I will use the pendulum to, to reflect what I have guessed right um and so if i were unscrupulous i could use this to to bilk people out of money um because you know um i'm a little out of practice but i'm pretty good at it and uh, i believe uh, i could have someone stabilize and still do it and they wouldn't feel it um i haven't had enough experimentation with other human beings uh, I, i've really just done done this by myself but um it's a very basic principle. Um, it, it's, it's a nice metaphor if you know how to do this for, for m small changes having larger effects. Um, but that's it. That's the pendulum trick. Um, and now you know how to do it. And you can make a pendulum from any bit of string and anything that's weighted, and you can practice with it. Now, again, if this, the string is stiff, um, you know, it won't go quite as well. If the chain is really short, you're not going to get as big a circle out of it. Um, the longer, uh, the longer the chain, the the larger the circle you can get out of it. The larger the 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 swing. Um, but I imagine there's a maximum for that because if it's like, it'll eventually get too heavy and and you'll have uh, less control. So that's the pendulum. Now, unrelated, completely unrelated. Here's another one I have that's stainless steel. Um, it doesn't swing as well as the other one, and I think partly the, the chain's a little shorter. Um, 
and because it's a a ball chain, it might be a little less flexy, so it may transmit the uh, the wave less good. I don't know. Um, there's, uh, but I, I do like the visual of this one. Uh, it's not great stage magic uh, unless I can find a way to magnify it. Um, yeah, going round and round. Look at my hand on the screen. It's, um, it is not in any way obviously going round and round. And it's not. Not in a macroscopic way is it moving at all. A little shifting up and down as I breathe and my heart beats, but that's not what's causing it to work. Um, okay, the other trick. All right, some of you have never sewn a button. I have. I have a few times. So this, this jacket has a, a loose button, all right? And if you are, you have clothing you really like and you want it to last a long time, it's fairly important to take a look at it from time to time and see if there's something about to fail. You repair it before it fails, it's way, way easier. By the way, in my pocket, I'm sure there's a magic trick associated with this. This is an eight colored handkerchief. And depending on how you fold it, you can use it as a pocket square um, that shows any of the eight colors. So, so I had it blue, but it can be white, it can be gold. Um, this is uh, a gift from Famke Roundstead, or probably from Nicole Marks. It's hard sometimes to tell who's what. Um, I love them both. But this jacket has two buttons that are actually very similar to the buttons on my sweater now that I look at them. But if you wait for the button to fall off, you might lose it. And if you wait for the button to fall off, it might be hard harder to tell exactly where it goes again, depending on how it does. But you can see this one is, is very, um, it's very far from the fabric. Its days are numbered. It's just got a few strands holding it on. Uh, by contrast, this is, this is how, how the other button is. It's like right there. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to repair this button. I'm not going to cut it off. I'm going to stitch it up um, just as it is. And on the other side, um, you may not be able to see, but you can see where the thread is on the other side. You can pull it through. Um, so that gives you the idea of where, where you're going to start, right? Where the needle's going to go in. Now, that's, this is pre-planning, right? This, this isn't, this isn't the thing yet. But um, there are people who've never, ever threaded a needle, people who've never uh, sewn a button, um, and uh, I'm here for you, right? Again, just like the magic trick, I'm not great at it, I'm not perfect at it, but I know it well enough to demonstrate it, and you can be better, simply by practicing, and by observing, and by experimenting. So I've got this little sewing kit, because I like little wooden boxes full of things. And I'm going to get black thread, and I'm going to get scissors. These are neat scissors. I came with a kit. And I'm going to get a needle. I've got, you know, if anyone knows if there's a historical reason why pincushions are often depicted as tomatoes, I'd love to know it. Um, where is there a needle? That's why that is. Um, all right, I've got, I thought I had, I thought I had, I just dropped a needle. I just dropped a needle. It is sitting there waiting to stab me. There it is. Nope. Oh, there it is. There it is. All right. This is the needle we'll use. Do not stab yourself in the lips. Okay. So, this is the needle. Oh, do I want the shorter needle? 
Shorter needle, bigger eye. I'll use it. Because uh, it'll be a little easier to, um, to thread. You are not going to be able to see enough detail. There, you can see the eye of the needle. Um, so, you're going to have to understand what's going on by what I say, um, probably more than by being able to see it directly. Uh, so, uh, I'm going to put this in the tomato. Um, because it will be hard for me to explain what I'm doing if I have a needle in my mouth. And we're going to set it there. Thread. I'm going to uh, pull off a length of thread. Uh, I'm going to pull off about that much. How do you know how much thread? I don't know. Uh, if I were stitching a straight line, I would go for like maybe double the length of what needed stitching, maybe triple, depending on how firmly I want to stitch it. For buttons, I just kind of do this, and if I run out of thread before I'm done, I'll do more. Uh, it doesn't matter if the back side of the button is sloppy. So, there we go. The end that I cut is pretty pretty clean. Um, the other end, they're both pretty good. If, if the end of your thread is fuzzy, if it's been broken instead of cut, snip it. You cannot thread a fuzzy needle. You can't thread a fuzzy thread. All right. So wait, there's, 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 there's trickery involved here. There, there's something, um, I recently did in front of someone who's been sewing a while and they went, holy shit, I had no idea that worked. I had never seen that before. So there is a trick part, even for people who, who know how to thread needles. Um, my sewing kit came with a needle threader that I have never been able to successfully get to work. Um, I am nearsighted and yet I can do this. I'm going to hold it up so that the eye is open, as it were, right? So the eye part is facing me, the, the, the head of the needle is, is horizontal, and I'm going to hold it against something light so I can see it. If I were using white thread, I might consider holding it against something dark so I can see it. Hold it so there's just um, a little bit of, you know, not too much sticking out of the thread. If it's too much, it'll be floppy and harder to control. If it's too little, you won't have enough room to work. And um, I almost do it more by knowing where things are than by seeing it, which is good because, as I said, I'm nearsighted at this distance. And because you are watching, I will have a hard time with this. I think I got it. I did not. Uh, th this is this is kind of a fun thing about um, threading a needle is that sometimes you can't tell if it worked or not until you kind of try it. But you've got to try it carefully because if you just give it a yank, you can yank it out even if it did work. There we go. Now, uh, the next step is going to be um, decided a little bit by what I'm doing. Um, I like few stitches, greater strength, right? Um, so I, I'll usually double the thread unless it's something delicate I'm working on. So uh, I, I do this, pull it so both ends are even. If you're not doubling the thread, you still want the, there to be a, a good size lead. Otherwise, you're going to pull the needle through and leave the thread behind. So here's the end of the thread, the two ends. Here's the trick. All right. I know, I know it's not a surprising or impressive trick to almost anyone, but if you've never seen this done or if you've had problems with this before, this might just save your life. Um, take the needle, wrap it around a couple times, do this action, right? And then roll it off the end and then grab and pull. And now you've got a knot. You need a knot in the end of the thread because you're going to pull the thread, you're going to sew it, and the thread's going to come right out. All right. So I didn't leave myself a lot of room. This kind of button doesn't need a lot. It's, it's got a, a single hole, right? It's not, I, I don't have to fill four holes or, or more. 
Um, it's just a single kind of mushroom cap style button. Let me find it. Um, I will probably regret not giving myself more thread, to be honest. Uh, but I can do this. I can get three or four stitches in there, which will be enough to accomplish it. Now again, here's the button. It's hanging loose. I can reach behind it and pull through. Pull it so it's snug up against the fabric. Um, and I can also see uh, here that it's um, unri unwinding, which is why it was in that position in the first place. So, needle goes in from the back right into the mess where that fabric, where, where the, the thread knotted, was knotted, right? Put it through. Don't even worry about the button until you get it through. And then you can set the button on the needle. This kind of uh, button, not too complicated. And then pull it through. Don't yank too hard because even with a knot, you can sometimes pull the, uh, pull the thread right through. Now, we've got fabric button, thread, needle. Take the needle, put it back in more or less the same spot it came out. All of your stitching is going to be right around that same spot. Um, if you're going to be super tidy, if your thread looked very different from the fabric and so the stitches were very visible, um, there's a lot of care you can take here. Um, I don't care. Pull it tight. Now the button is already kind of secured in place, right? So keep the tension on the thread from here on out um, and your button will stay in place. So again, go back in, more or less in the middle of that, that knot. If you're a little off, it's okay. This time I would pull the needle all the way through and then through the hole in the button. Because from now on the button's not moving again. The needle has to move. And then back through, your aim is to come out more or less back in the mess in the back. All right, so uh, that's two stitches. So far we want, I'd say at least four or five, right? Uh, still got most of the thread. It doesn't use up a lot of thread per stitch. Um, there is, um, you can see a bunch of loose mess. This is the original thread that's hanging out. Um, I'm going to leave it there until I'm done, and then, um, if I'm feeling pretty safe about things, I will clip it off. Um, but sometimes it's better to, to knot it up or, um, you know, but it's not really doing any work anymore is the thing. So, in from the back, through the button, back into the mess. Uh, a four-hole button or a two-hole button, a little more uh, care is needed uh, where you go through. Because once the button is um, locked in place, you're going to, you know, I don't know about you, but I spend time poking the, 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 the needle in, trying to get it, you know, I missed the hole, I missed the hole, I missed the hole. Oh, there it is. Now, once you get a few stitches in, you can see from where the thread has gone before successfully uh, where, where to put the needle in. Okay, so that's what, three? Now, because this is doubled thread, remember, my, my three is six strands of thread. So this is going to be pretty sturdy. That's the idea. I have an adventurer's life. I don't have time for delicate clothing. All right, and I'm going to do one more. Just one more. And then I'll show you how to tie it off. All right, and I am absolutely being sloppy about this. The, um, the material I'm sewing on, very good camouflage for this black thread. No real need to worry about tidy stitches, uh, unless the ghost of your grandmother is looking over your shoulder. Now, um, you can see there, there are loose, loose threads on the top as well. Those are also the original thread. They are not doing any work. Um, I will snip those. The threads I made are actually the the least messy. All these loose threads here are, are the original stuff uh, that had gone slack and unraveled. Okay, now, I am currently now regretting slightly not 
clipping the thread, the, the loose thread. Uh, because now I've got this mess, and to tie it off, I want um, a little bit of care. So this is all very camouflaged. And if I wanted to, if I was a, a proper teacher of this sort of thing, I'd have like white fabric and big thread and, a, you know. Um, okay, so I'm going to take the needle. Staying on this side of the fabric, I'm going to go under the bunch, under the, you know, th there's like six or eight stitches, right? or strands uh, as part of three or four stitches. Um, no, go away. Just a minute. Um, and, uh, all right, pull it through, pull it all the way past the knot. Then, what I do, it's another trick, just like uh, tying the first knot. You take, um, you need a little bit of slack to do this. You take the, the loop that you haven't pulled through yet, wrap it around the needle three or four times. And what that does is when you pull the needle through, don't go too nuts with that. When you pull the needle through, it creates a knot. Um, and then just pull it snug. And then don't, don't cut anything or break anything yet. Check the button. Check the knot, the bunch. It's all pretty good. Snip your um, your new thread. Uh, not right up against the knot. Little little leave just a little bit of a tail. Not much. Um, and then I'm going to stick that in the pin cushion. And then. Uh, all this loose material, I'm going to snip that. Check the button to see if I haven't really screwed it up just there, right? And all the leftover that was sticking out at the top was already pulled through, so now we have a successful button. <laughs> it's okay, Sasha. I, d I didn't mean I didn't mean to 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 snap if it if it sounded serious. Um, your your Always welcome to, to say hi, even if I'm on video. Um, that's, that's Sasha. Nope, that way. That's Sasha. He's my roommate. He's a great guy. He tapped on my door, and I, I told him to go away. He doesn't have to go away. Um, all right. And now, particularly with buttons, you want to test, does it still work? Yep, still works. Um, it does the job. If your button fell off and uh, you you had to sew it on without it still being a little bit attached, um, then it's it's harder to find the exact placement. Um, sometimes you can still see where the stitches are or the loose threads of the previous join, um, or if not, um, just. Um, Pull your, 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 your garment together where it would be buttoned. So like if this button weren't there, I, I would button this and, and like in a, in a stand-up mirror sort of check that it was lining up correctly. Chocolate, olives, and crackers? Good lord, if I'd known that. Um, make sure it lines up and then you can take a, a pen or a bit of chalk and stick it through the, the buttonhole. Um, to mark where the button will go. Uh, and you want your button centered on the buttonhole because the buttonhole is a slit. You want the button centered on the buttonhole. Um, and that's sewing on a button. The only real uh, uh, challenge uh, with, with that is um, different buttons have slightly different patterns, but it's the same deal. You tie the knot, you go in from back through a hole, you come back in uh, roughly where your knot started, and then you do that a few times. If you've got a four hole, then uh, you've got two and two, right? Uh, two and two. Uh, and then you're going to do like a couple loops through this pair and then a couple loops through this pair. Or if you don't, if you want to be fancy, you can do loops through the diagonal opposites and then like that. So your, your thread is making an X. Or you can just go sloppy everywhere you want.
the idea is to just get enough strands in that the button stays on. Um, and if your, your, your fabric thread and button are all a similar color, then you don't have to be very tidy. Um, if they are contrasting and hugely visible, then, um, yeah, uh, you might want to get your grandmother to do it. Uh, so that's it. That's it. Skicks and two tricks. I will see you next time. Um, use this period as well as you can. Uh, but if you're not being useful, that's fine too. Just survive, come out the other side, and then we'll have a party. <laughs>